Recent times have seen significant research into potential energy storage systems for the grid. It is the most crucial technological advancement people can make in the fight against climate change. Modern solar and wind energy technologies can now produce more than enough electricity for the whole human population at a fraction of the cost of older fossil fuel power sources. Since renewable energy sources are less expensive, greener, and more sustainable, nations are becoming less dependent on ongoing imports of fossil fuels. This energy storage issue is currently the main obstacle to the adoption of renewable energy. While hydrogen appears set to capture long-term energy storage applications, lithium-ion batteries and other cutting-edge battery technologies are taking the lead in meeting most energy storage needs. However, the oldest and most used type of energy storage has been completely ignored in this investigation. A straightforward way of storing energy involves pumping water to a high reservoir and releasing it to power an impeller turbine when electricity is required. One of the oldest technologies in our current electrical infrastructure is pumped hydro. It is a tough, reliable, and advanced technology, providing grids worldwide with an enormously valuable service for more than a century. We have been requested to use this tried-and-true technology to store more energy. As we will see, spending money on infrastructure is not nearly as straightforward. We examined Turlow Hill, Ireland's first and only pumped hydro station, to find out more about this significant technology. Turlow Hill has historically used thermal power generation from coal, oil, and peat-fueled stations. However, Ireland's wind power production has been growing quickly and is now a lucrative resource. The sector is assisting the nation in shutting down those highly polluting fossil fuel plants and switching to renewable energy. Ireland has great real estate to start expanding its offshore and onshore wind resources due to its windy location on the edge of the Atlantic. Let's examine the operation of the power plant concealed within this mountain. Starting with the tunnel. The 600-meter-long tunnel was created by employing explosives to blast granite rock out of the mountain until the internal cavern was found. A 28-meter-high chasm was cleaned here. The 473-megawatt generators had to be installed 23 meters wide and 82 meters long inside the mountain. Electric motors draw power from the grid to spin impellers on the lower level. This pumps water uphill as we enter the tunnel from the higher level where the pony motors are located. This valve on the lower level opens to let water flow past the impeller to produce power. The generator, situated directly beneath the pony motor, is now driven by rotating the impellers in the opposite direction. This one is a single device that can pump water and produce electricity. The rotating speed, in this case, cannot be altered. It is a generator with a set speed. Locked to the grid at a frequency of 50 Hz, the flow rate entering the impeller is restricted by wicket gates between this valve and the generator, reducing the generator to 5 MW. This innovation allows Turlow Hill to adjust production to meet grid demands. Additionally, it has a compressed air evacuation mechanism that enables a rapid water evacuation from the impeller chamber, utilizing a burst of compressed air. As a result, the impeller may quickly change its direction without being slowed down by water resistance, enabling a swift transition from generation to pumping at Turlow Hill. But how many Turlow Hills would Ireland need to switch entirely to renewable energy sources? Imagine a water cube that is one cubic meter in size to get a sense of the scope of the current project. By making it taller, we can increase its energy. The equation for gravitational potential energy, which is just the object's mass multiplied by the gravitational acceleration multiplied by its height, can be used to determine the gain in energy. The height between our starting point and final point is what we're referring to here as height. A height increase of 1 meter adds 98 10 joules of energy because 1 cubic meter of water weighs 1,000 kilograms. Here, as watt-hours are a more widely used measurement, we will convert them to them. Approximately 2.725 watt-hours are equal to 98 10 joules. That is not much. Although we can't completely convert the energy, it could power a 100-watt lamp for just 98.1 seconds. That would be closer to 78.5 seconds if Turlow Hill operates at roughly 80% efficiency. One cubic meter of water would be enough to illuminate that same light bulb for 22,452 seconds, 
or around 6 hours 21 minutes, if we raise the bar to 286 meters. Of course, we couldn't drip feed water for over 6 hours using a generator. Water rushes through the machine at a maximum flow rate of 28.31 cubic meters per second. If all four 73 megawatt generators are deployed, the overall flow rate will be 111.3 cubic meters per second. The 2.31 million cubic meters upper reservoir would be drained in just over five and a half hours at this flow rate. You can feel the ground tremble as this valve opens, and the water presses down on it with a force of 29 atmospheres. The generation process creates an amazing force behind it. The rotors inside the magnetic stators are driven to rotate at a rate of 500 revolutions per minute, producing 73 megawatts of power. These four generators can provide 292 megawatt of power when used collectively, capable of meeting Ireland's peak electricity demand of 6,000 megawatt which happens every day at around 5.30 p.m., or around 4.8% of the country's overall electrical requirements. This truly enormous battery makes Ireland's intermittent wind generation much more manageable. This is how wind energy production in Ireland has looked during the past month, moving from a minimum of 300 megawatts, or just 5% of maximum demand, to a maximum of 42-49 megawatts, almost 80% of Ireland's maximum demand. Fortunately, Ireland's grid operator has improved at predicting wind generation from weather information. But going ahead, this natural gas generation must be fully stopped. So let's calculate how much pumped hydro storage would be required to replace Ireland's typical natural gas generation. Although it might not be correct, this will give us a general indication of the difficulty. The average generation for the previous month, which amounted to 4,840 megawatts, was revealed by the copy of the generation data from the Irish Grid Dashboard website. Around 49 to 51 percent of the electricity produced during that time was from fossil fuels. Therefore, we most likely require 2420 megawatts of power production. To meet such demand at any given time, 8.31 additional pumped hydro stations like Turlow Hill would be necessary. Yet, Turlow Hill can only operate for 5 hours 31 minutes at peak generation. We might require about 4 to 5 groups of 8 pumped hydro stations to go online at various times throughout the day since this power generation would need to be accessible 24 hours a day. A total of 37 stations of equal size would be needed. Now keep in mind that Ireland is a nation with a comparatively low population. A tremendous undertaking is having 37 amenities like this for such a small population. With the same head as Turlough Hill, a single, enormous reservoir would require 85 million cubic meters of space. That is nearly the same volume as the ninth largest lake in Ireland, and it is difficult to find space for that on top of significant hills and mountains. It is challenging to locate adequate locations for pump storage. We require not just one but two reservoirs that can hold enormous amounts of water spaced apart by at least 200 meters, as a long passage between the upper and lower reservoir would result in larger energy losses owing to friction and viscous fluid effects. The horizontal distance between the two reservoirs must be kept to a minimum. Boring the tunnels between the reservoirs will cost more money as well. The QDOF threshold is often determined by a head height to horizontal distance ratio. Anything over 110 is typically considered unprofitable. With a 200-meter head, the greatest horizontal distance between the reservoirs would be 2 kilometers. To prevent transmission losses or the necessity for costly, specially constructed high-voltage transmission lines to link to a far-off grid, the site must be close to major population centers. A supply of fresh water is also required. It is a far more significant logistical problem than people think. Freshwater resources are precious, and altering them frequently raises environmental issues. Since it is challenging to locate suitable locations for pumped hydro storage, let's use algorithms that search through databases of map data in search of suitable locations. While many proposed sites are already under construction or vying for planning approval, there aren't enough of them to meet our entire energy storage needs. Ireland only has one site actively requesting authorization to start building. The complex will reportedly cost $948 million, and its lower reservoir will be an abandoned strip mine. 
it is moving too slowly. To address these issues, several businesses are working to do so. Some areas where fresh water is in short supply may be opened up by a pump storage facility that employs salt water instead of fresh water. A seawater pump storage plant was once tested in Japan, but it had to be shut down because there wasn't enough electricity demand. Others, such as Quidnit Energy, are attempting to use pressure pump water instead, which would be released to power a generator as necessary. Energy can be reliably and indefinitely stored via pump storage. It's standing still. It faces competition from less expensive batteries that don't require huge investments of $1 billion, but their ability to store energy for longer periods will ensure their continuous use. A combination of different battery types for quick frequency response and short-term load shifting, with pumped hydro being utilized for longer-term storage of between 12 and 72 hours, with hydrogen being the sole practical choice. Without a certain, this issue won't be solved by just one energy storage technique. The grid's requirements and a comprehensive examination of the situation will be required. One part of how people must change to live more sustainably on this planet is electricity generation. We still have a long way to go if we want to prevent a climate catastrophe. Thanks for watching. If this video is insightful, please go on and like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell button for more of our updates.